and meeting people because we're all one. And that was one of Werner von Braun's messages and all of these people that I met's messages. So now I'm going to take you into the document. It's a treaty. And as I said, it's going to be posted on the OpensMind.tv website and on my Facebook will have lead to it. Here it is. Can you read it? It's kind of small print, so I'm going to go over it. And I have just a few copies. We can get some copies if you're desperate for them from Open Minds. This document is the first time ever, ever, in a treaty that's going to acknowledge, and in a UN treaty, the indigenous people who never get to sign a treaty. Can you imagine? And the cosmic cultures. And you're the first to see this. This is a milestone document and moment. The first two paragraphs basically say it all. The Outer Space Security and Development Treaty of 2011 establishes a framework and procedures to assure that space will be a neutral realm from which all classes of weapons are banned. All classes, so we don't have to define them. From which no hostile action shall be taken toward Earth or, surround, or the surrounding cosmos. And then listen to this. The treaty invites nation states to become signatories to the treaty. Well, nation states are who signs a treaty at the UN. And invites all parties, parties, these are parties to the treaty. This is new. All parties, including nation states, indigenous nations, and cosmic cultures to commit to a plan and assist in the orderly development and implementation of a framework and procedures that will assure and verify space is and will remain a neutral realm from which all classes of space-based weapons are banned in perpetuity permanently. Now I'm going to go on. These are the agreements I'm going to just quickly go over for you that the parties to the treaty agree to, and that includes the indigenous nations and the cosmic cultures. And I know some of you are thinking, well, what about the evil aliens, the evil cosmic cultures, the evil extraterrestrials, whatever you divide them into and call them. Mm -mm. Before I go on with this, I'm going to tell you something else that I've only gone public with to MUFON, whom I thank too for supporting me and helping to get me here too, MUFON Phoenix. Chris, Stacy, Jim, the whole group, everybody that was there. I went public and they, in that group. I thought 30 people would show up and about 100 did. And I told them my story and I want to share this with you quickly. I am an experiencer. I hid this for so many years. Thanks to Stephen Greer who protected a lot of us, I didn't go public with it at the Disclosure Project. God, I'm breaking out in a sweat. <laughs> This was the most extraordinary um, moment in my life when I had another man in the room, Dr. Robert Zanger, a famous, well-known therapist, who had come to visit me in Phoenix at a conference of the People's Network, actually, because I made him come and talk to me there. I didn't want to meet with him in my house because he seemed so obsessed with this idea about UFOs. And he was in the room with me when a line of ETs came in through the wall, one came forward between us and had a whole conversation for about an hour and a half. And I was told that he would remember some of it, I would remember all of it, and it's all coming back. It has stayed in my mind all this time. It was just before the Disclosure Project took place. And again, because I haven't read any books, I went to my first meeting with Barbara Lamb and her group the first night we were here, so I was in a room with 50 experiencers. Wow, what an experience that was. And I was told I have another message to give. So I get this assignment from the, all these different people I've mentioned, but this one is so profound. And it's been confirmed now that this is true. None of them are hostile now. Everything is in control in the universe. In fact, in the last couple of years, I've now heard that these experiments are not going on, that we're either interpreted or in fact painful in many different ways because 
I was told in my experience by this being that yes, we did these experiments, we're sorry we hurt people, and look what you do to other animals um, in your experimenting. And they were trying to find out who we were the way it was explained to me. Some are the Durga holding the light in peace, others are here killing each other and even eating each other. This is the language that was used for me. Um, they can use the word God or anything that relates in religion, but it's all a spiritual message. In fact, all of these people that I worked with had a spiritual message that that's what this whole event is about. It's a spiritual message. It's not about technology. It's not about politics. It's not about economics. It's about raising our consciousness to a higher frequency where we really all get that the grid is about love. It's about love. It's a grid. I've learned along the way from this experience that we really are all one but I gotta tell you I'm discerning right now because we're in transition and I don't want these people around me right now who are causing the problems on the other hand if they're not hurting me specifically I will address anybody because we have to get this message out that none of them are hostile it's been repeated to me over and over in visits it's changed they too have evolved like we are they're at a higher frequency they know that people, some people won't believe it, that's okay, let's find the people who do. And it doesn't matter for the sake of this treaty. The unique thing about what I'm going to read to you now is that we can all agree to it no matter what our belief system is, background, our journey up to this point, no matter how you think or interpret what's going on, or no matter even what the reality is in your life or in this whole issue. What I'm going to present to you now I hope you can hear this, that you'll take a journey a step further with me. I've had to push myself up into it too, because this has been written by some amazing people that fit the time of where we are in this room, which is why I came to present this. So I'm going to go on now with just the agreements to start with the actual agreements that these parties will agree to. And I've been trying it out on different people, and it works. So if you would now, let's, if I had an ecstasy tablet, I'd drop it all on you. <laughs> because it makes you drop all the crap, you know, and get into that higher space. Okay. So now, you've taken your ecstasy. We're all in a higher place. So we are now reaffirming the urgency of preventing a destabilizing and threatening and costly arms race in space. Well, that's pretty obvious to anybody, except those who come from a place where they still think weapons are going to make us more secure. And I know a lot of people like that. The second one is, they will, the parties to this treaty, recognize that the agreement by treaty to create a weapons-free space domain, ensure universal cooperation in space, will save huge sums of money that otherwise are going to be spent on these dangerous polluting weapons and technologies. They recognize that the elimination of space-based weapons is more easily accomplished with an agreement before further investment is taking place. In fact, you know there are billions of dollars. Do you know the R&D program of space-based weapons, although it will be denied like a lot of what you hear? This is the largest research and development program in recorded history mandated to weaponize space. And they'll say, oh, no, it's only about ground-based weapons. Uh-uh. Okay, so this is before any further investment. It's just easier, obviously, to eliminate the space-based weapons program. This confirms that it's the obligation of all state leaders to ban all space-based weapons, including the intention to weaponize space. Or that includes any celestial body or the moon or any space-based te technology anywhere in space. We're talking now about in space. And at the end of this, you'll hear, this is not about the ground-based system. Yes, we want to get rid of polluting, dangerous weapons, technologies on the planet. But we need to start someplace where you and I can finally be successful at doing something that there's no debate over. We can all agree to one thing. If we can, we've got it. 
So, we reaffirm the urgent need for agreements on concrete proposals and projects deriving from confidence-building world cooperative space ventures, which will prevent an arms race in outer space. Yes, I know some don't want weapons or technology in space at all, but since it's already happened and it ain't going to stop, this is calling for cooperation in space. Cooperation in space is what's going on right now, but it's about to flip if we don't jump in and stop this and call for cooperative ventures in outer space. And that will be confidence building me measures as people work in space, the astronauts and cosmonauts, the very first ones I met who met in space, there's a picture NASA had of their heads upside down, two of them, they said they absolutely cannot fight in space. It's too funny that they're even there. Like, it's funny that I'm even here to me, but that's... They cannot uh, fight in space, but they will if we let them get away with this one. Next, recognize the information and data gained from cooperative space exploration and development will provide unlimited benefits and opportunities to all humankind in areas of health. I mentioned all the ways that we could have high technology and higher consciousness and information to heal that doesn't require the kind of drugs that aren't the ones that Timothy and the guys were talking about. I mean, these are the ones that you hear on television that, here, swallow this, you'll feel better, just if you go blind, or you get diarrhea, or you, in fact, get depressed, or suicidal, or you kill yourself. You know those big... <laughs> Education, I'm an educator. We need high technology. I helped organize the first 24 countries in two-way two audiovisual satellite link-ups. I helped set up 5,000 ground stations in India on the ATS-6 that I worked on with Von Braun, the application technology, six most complex, huge satellite in existence. Unbelievable experience because I learned, and Global Education, Global Educators magazine wrote it up, that there are lists of cooperative ventures that you can do in space that I got actually from Russia from one of my trips. They stuck it in my pocket, I published it, and then soon we saw the Apollo-Soyuz link-up. And we started seeing how satellites could provide global education. Imagine three satellites, that's all, in geosynchronous orbit, 300 or three, well, anyway, miles and miles above the Earth in geosynchronous orbit. Three of them provide the footprint to the world. And we could have global education. We could share, respect each other's cultures, learn about each other via satellite, not classify all this information. To me, as an educator, there's so much that we can do. Thankfully, we've now got, and the children know how to do it, Facebook and all the other uh, social networking technologies and computers where we, I worked with Peace Child and we had to send videos to each other. Now you can do it on the computer if any of you are doing things like that. It's the most amazing thing for homeschooling, for education in general, and we need that. Um, the economy, my gosh, we keep hearing about stimulating the economy. Have you noticed with all the problems you hear about the economy, we are not hearing about cutting the war budget. And if they do start to cut the war budget, it's something that we either finished working on already or we don't need anymore because they've got something new and better. So here we're talking about stimulating the economy. Imagine the Apollo, Von Braun told me how many people, thousands of people worked on just the Apollo program, but now the world is in space. I spoke at the International Astronautical Federation Congress years ago, and it was about the economic benefits of what's going on in space. And now we can stimulate the economy no longer with the war machine. Listen, we're going into space whether we like it or not. If we create a huge space program and we include what we've learned and we're learning and will learn when our friends, our visitors come in and we invite them for real, where they know they're going to be safe and not shot down, will somebody please tell me where the landing pads are being